Thank you for still being with us here on Plus TV Africa. And this is Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. Today, I'll be joined by a reputation manager uh, through Skype, Tubosun Akeju, to make sense of this. But I shall begin with introducing the headlines for the Punch newspaper. For the Punch newspaper, it says petrol subsidy removal, a game changer. That's according to LCCI on page 24. It will be displayed on your screens, don't worry. We killed 105 Boko Haram fighters in Yobe, according to the army. It's already displayed there, as you can see, on page 11. Pray at home during Ramadan, Sultan tells Muslims. Nigeria others need $114 billion to fight COVID-19, according to IMF. And that story also is on page 24. Now, presidency, the big story for the Punch newspaper is the presidency bars ministers, other uh, carries uh, burial attendees from Vila. That's the big story. is on page, pages 2 and 7. Lagos yet to reach COVID-19 peak, according to Commissioner for Health. Uh, test South Africa tests these figures. You can see 114,000. 114, Ghana, 60,000 plus. Egypt, 55,000. Nigeria, 7,000 plus. And coronavirus, we've started journey to recovery, says Adeboye. Some message of hope there. Uh, we can see picture stories. I believe it will be displayed of uh, some arrest again from the task force of FCT uh, there. And down we find Rivers releases oil workers. Pengerson suspends strike on page 14. And Oyo slashes assemblies allocation by 30%. That story is on page 16 of the Punch newspaper. Lagos to pay Abulado explosion victims' families. On pages 4 and 5. It's good to hear something from that place. And bandits kill 47 Katsina villagers in multiple attacks. On page 12, again, the story of insecurity. Confusion over alleged killing of man by Lagos hoodlums. On pages 4 and 5. And lastly, Collaborators of pardoned major released 2002, according to the presidential panel on page 11. If I move on to Tubosun now, can you hear me? Uh, what story is getting yes. your attention? Hi, I'm Akka. Good morning. Good yes, morning. I can hear you. Good to have you remotely. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now help us understand what's, uh, what is um, catching your attention this morning from the Punch newspaper. Um, just just to move a bit, a little bit um, away from you know the sad and scary news of the pandemic. I mm -hmm. think I want to talk about um, the removal of subsidy yes, uh, or the you know. I think that the government again has a rare opportunity um, to fully deregulate the downstream um, sector of um, in Nigeria, and I think that because of the crash in crude oil prices in the international market. Um, the prices of, um, you know, the output of crude oil, which is petrol, kerosene, diesel, you know, will be at an all-time low. And if we have the opportunity to do that without putting pain at all on Nigerians at the moment, I think that we should just move and directly. Because what's going to happen is the forces of the market, uh, demand and supply will come into play. And people will become more creative about how they want to approach this. And government can move swiftly to um, focusing on mass transit infrastructure as soon as possible. You know, uh, like someone once said that the way to, to know a developing, a developed country is when both the rich and the poor can take advantage of the mass transit infrastructure that is available. So um, while we know that the, if the prices of crude oil in the international market should go back, you know, to what people, uh, what most of the players want, which is usually around forty, fifty, or sixty dollars per barrel, will uh, it will affect the price of petrol um, in the market? We also know that at that time we will have, you know, enjoyed a bit of respite, and then Nigeria won't be under pressure because definitely there's recession that is coming, and I mean, the prices of crude oil will go up at some point in time, but we just need to, you know, be very, very much prepared. So I think that there's a real opportunity. For government to just, you know, um, push the um, petroleum bill and, you know, re just to regulate the downstream sector, you know, very quickly. I think we'll all, it will all be for the good of this country, you know, in, even in short and long term. 
All right, Tubo. So um, let's also take a look at, uh, I apologize, uh, the, earlier I read a different um, paper. Uh, now, you can see on your screen, I believe you have the same copy as I do. Uh, let's talk about Kiari, COVID-19 cops is not infectious, says task force. And presidential team apologizes <laughs> for flouting uh, their own recommendation. And Lagos plans to make wearing a fast, uh, face mask, I beg your pardon, compulsory next week. 44% of mm -hmm. your cases traceable to UCH, Kano Records 23, among others. What's your thoughts on, you know, that big story there? COVID-19 cops is not infectious. I think that um, it's not the place of the presidential task force to tell us if the, uh, the COVID-19 cops is infectious or not. Um, and as you already know, the current, this novel coronavirus is one that the world and even the real experts, you know, are coming to terms to understand the nature of the organism. Uh, uh, I have a background in microbiology, and I know that... Um, RNA virus particularly are very, very, you know, they can, you, they can get easily misunderstood. Um, you'd recall that in December last year, slash January this year, even the WHO did say that they couldn't confirm human-to-human uh, -human transmission of COVID-19. And if there's anything that has put the world, you know, that has disrupted the world as we know it now, is the human-to-human -human transmission of COVID-19. So I think the task force um, will not be right to tell us. It will not be unless, you know, there's a reference to WHO saying that, which I have not seen anywhere, because in other countries, you know, um, the, the, the corpses of COVID-19 are treated absolutely, you know, with, you know, very, very much care. You know, and I think that, you know, it, they, 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 to, to, they, they did wrong, but it's also nice to see that, you know, we have some people in Nigeria that can come out and say, oh, yes, we're on the other side. And we do apologize for flouting, you know, our recommendation or WHO's recommendation, because I think that the recommendation that, that they flouted were the recommendations of the World Health Organization, who today is the most trusted authority on COVID-19. Um, Lagos plan to make everyone start wearing face masks. Mm -hmm. I foresee a relax of um, the lockdown from the Lagos state government, and I am suspecting that's why they've um, come out to say this week that, you know, um, they will make wearing of masks compulsory. But mm -hmm. coincidentally, yesterday I was looking at a chart that says, so if a COVID-19 infected person is not, wear is not wearing a mask and stands mm -hmm. beside, you know, um, a COVID-19 um, person, sorry, if a COVID-19 person is not wearing a mask and someone with that COVID-19, if, they, if they're not maintaining social distancing or they have any contact, the chances are up to like 80% for the person to get infected. Um, and if the COVID-19 person is wearing the mask, you know, you have like a 5%. Um, so there's a bit of work to be done there, but the question that remains is how do we get every negotiating a mask because we have about 20 million people in this place and if all of us can wear the mask then you might as well just stay back at home but it's a very tough decision so i would even say that maybe what the Lagos state government should be looking at to add to that plan of you know everybody has to wear masks is we have to maintain you know social distancing as much as possible and maintain a high level of hygiene i want to add to that that with all the stories that I've seen across the world about COVID-19 and even some of the um, people that have survived that I've interacted with, I think what's most important is for everybody really to be proactive, you know, about this thing. And maybe you have it or not. I think that there has to be setting guidelines, you know, outside this proper hygiene that we're taking for everybody to just take that, okay, you know what, this thing can come to anybody at any time so that you're well, you know, prepared for it. And like one of the medical... Uh, practitioners, you know, said to me that as long as the virus doesn't get to the lower respiratory system, it's easier to manage. The moment it gets to the lower respiratory system, uh, that's when, you know, you have a crisis in your hand. So, mm -hmm. uh, and um, for the for the issue in Oyo, so, Oyo so is very... Before you continue, I was going to say we'll move on to the nation, but yes, very quickly, share your thoughts on Oyo and the slash there. I, I think Oyo shows, um, the issue in usage just shows us the power of community transmission, which we have to be absolutely, absolutely careful about, you know, tra community transmission is is very, 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 very dangerous, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to be very, very mindful and work towards, 
you know, preventing uh, community transmission of COVID-19. All right, we'll go to the Nation uh, newspaper, but before uh, we talk about it, um, since we're talking about community transmission and the communication behind what we do and the seriousness of COVID-19, um, if we had woken up on the Saturday that, you know, we got the news of the death of the late chief of staff and during the funeral, you put on your national television and you saw maybe just three or five persons at that funeral, don't you think that would have sent a strong message and signals to Nigeria to say, you know what, we are in a serious situation and we have to take this seriously? Because it looks like we are relaxed again and going, life seems to be gradually returning to normal. What are your thoughts? Yeah, like I said before, I mean, it was serious. I mean, saying that it was a four power will you know, even be understating what, you know, all those who attended that um, funeral did. It's, um, you know, very, very, very unfortunate that they, 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 they violated all the guidelines and, you know, attended him. Um, but again, what has been done has been done. Right. I think we just have to walk twice as hard to convince everybody about the seriousness of this um, of this um, disease, uh, mm -hmm. of this pandemic, to show people that, yes, what we did there was a mistake. And that's why I said, you know, they can come and tell us again that, oh, you can't, it's okay to handle the cops. But they've also done the honorable thing by saying that, oh, we apologize for violating our own recommendation. But they have to work twice as hard with their communication to say, you see that thing we did, it was wrong. These are the precautions we're staying. All of us, we're going to stay and isolate ourselves for 14 days. Mm -hmm. All of us are going to subject ourselves to be tested and all of that. I, for one, I do not, I'm not one to dwell too much on problems or mistakes. I just want us to quickly Solutions. look at how we can fix it. They've done the wrong thing. And I think that they need to come up, you know, if, even, even if it's possible, make themselves ambassadors for this campaign to say, because I did this wrong thing, I'm staying in my house for 14 days, I'm self-isolating in my house, all of us have been tested, you know, we're waiting for our result to make sure that we, we don't have, you know, this thing. Please, all right, let's uh, you know, enjoy you today. Okay, let's go to the nation in the interest of time, and I think that will be the last paper that we will look at. Now, uh, Sultan bans Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan talks and prayers. Muslims to pray at home. That story is on page uh, 28, as you can see, already displayed on your screen there. Anxiety in Lagos over hoodlums and vigilance. Boys on page 5, police on their trail. Wearing a face mask, now compulsory. Enforcement to resume. Uh, virus pandemic spread to continue, says Fed Federal government. No new case in Lagos as um, NCDC reports 38 cases. Dangote coalition plans test for 1 million Nigerians. And then crowd control failed at KRS burial, PTF admits. And to the right, you will see the figures there, as always, already displayed. Uh, the global figures and, of course, our own local figure here. And there's a picture of... Um, a picture story there showing, I believe, the testing for COVID-19. Uh, very quickly, Tubosun, which uh, two stories can we take a look at? What are your thoughts on uh, the Sultan banning Ramadan, if we begin from there? I think um, that, was the, that was a move in the right direction coming from uh, the number one Muslim uh, cleric in the Nigeria to tell people that please stay back in your house and, you know, serve your God. And I think, like I said, you know, while making comments about um, the uh, funeral and, you know, the PTF team, that once you see leaders at that level, you know, they are, they are super, they are mega super influences, mm. you know, to the people who really respect and adore them. So um, it's very impressive to see, you know, um, the Sultan of Sokoto coming out to say that please stay in your house and observe Ramadan so that, you know, we do not continue to have this issue, which also is, you know, maintaining the social distancing um, rule to contain this virus. Yeah. In a nation that is as religious as Nigeria, maybe it's important that we get that information out in good time. Tubosu, I want to say thank you very much for yeah. coming and uh, analyzing yeah. remotely. And again, we'll say keep safe wherever you are. Thank you very much for having me. All right. And that's where we thank will... Thank you very much for having me. That's where we'll call it a wrap on Off the Press. We'll do this Monday to Friday here on Plus TV Africa, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. I am Amaka Okoye saying please stay home and stay safe.